I want to show you how to use um, Maple in order to graph some of the quadric surfaces we've been talking about. Now, all of these can be plotted using implicit plot 3D, but sometimes we get better results if we can solve for one variable as a function of the others, and then we can just use the plot 3D command. So, no matter what, if we're going to graph in three dimensions, we're going to need to load the plots package. Now, in Maple, in order to load a package, you type with. And then in parentheses, you type the name of the package. In this case, we want the plots package. Every command in Maple needs to end in either a semicolon or a colon. If you end it in a semicolon, you see the output. If you know what the output is going to be, you can end it in a colon, and that will suppress the output. So I'm going to use a semicolon on the end here, and it's going to show me all the different uh, functions that I've loaded, different things that I can do. I'm particularly interested in getting this command display to work and also implicit plot 3D. So once I've got the plotting package loaded, then I can plot um, a quadric surface. I just type implicit plot, implicit plot 3D, since it's a three-dimensional quadric surface. Now, um, in this case, we have this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1. In two dimensions, that would just draw a circle, right? But z is free, and so that circle gets sort of smeared in the z direction. It creates a cylinder. So we're expecting to see a circular cylinder in this case. I'm going to do implicit plot 3D. The next thing I do is put the, the equation that all the points need to satisfy. So that's the equation of the cylinder in this case. And then I have to give ranges for all of the variables. So I know it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a circle of radius 1 in the, in the xy plane that then is sort of stacked in the z direction. So if I let x go from negative 1 to 1 and let y go from negative 1 to 1, and z doesn't really matter as much as I want to see of that. I guess I could do negative 1 to 1. I just had to make sure that I could see the entire circle. And since it was a circle of radius 1, I make sure that I sort of had a box there. So with the x's and the y values. So when I, when I run that command, notice that it's, uh, it's ending in a semicolon. So I run that command, and yeah, lo and behold, we, we see the cylinder that, that we were expecting from, from running that command. You can grab that cylinder and rotate it and take a look at it if you like and sort of play with it that way. That's, that's pretty handy. Okay, so here's another example of, of graphing. Um, uh, we've got um, this quadric surface, z equals y squared plus 1. So we can tell in the yz plane we have um, a parabola, and there's no constraint on the x, so the x can be whatever it wants, and so this is a parabolic cylinder. Again, once we've loaded that, pl that uh, plotting package, then we can, we can do this. We can use implicit plot 3D, and we could, plot, we could put in the... Um, put in the function y, z equals y squared plus 1 and just put ranges for x. Um, let's see, x can go from, oh I don't know, we could do like from negative 1 to 1 and we could let y uh, equal negative 1 to 1. Let's see, um, and z, well since that's y squared plus 1, it's always going to be at least 1, so I'll maybe have z start at 1 and go to uh, what uh, 3 would be sufficient in this case. So um, I missed something here. Implicit, oh, I wrote wrong command. Implicit plot 3D is the name of the command. Okay, and there is our parabolic cylinder there. Okay, let's see. In fact, you know, it's a little bit taller than it needs to be since uh, if it's y squared plus 1 and y is at most 1, then z is at most 2. So you could get a little more detailed image here. Okay, now implicit plot 3D is not necessarily the most efficient thing to do because when you do that then Maple um, combs throughout sort of the box that you, that you specified by your ranges looking for points that solve the problem. Um, a better thing that you can do is to just give the equation of of the function. So z is equal to y squared plus 1. So instead of using implicit plot 3D, since z is a function of x and y, then we could just give that function of x and y. We don't write z equals, we just write y squared plus 1. Um, and then give ranges on x and y and let maple figure it out. So um, this is because one variable z is a function of the others that we can just use plot 3D to specify the func function and ranges using plot 3D, and let's see what we get. You notice that the graph is a little bit neater looking than before, so that's because for every point in that range, Maple was able to plug in the x and y value and get out a z value, and so it was able to make a, a much nicer 
nicer picture. In fact, you can see that uh, no matter what the value of x is, you get a parabola, and you can actually see those parabolas. One thing that's nice to do is to put, uh, to put some axes on here so you can see. If you have a plot, you can right-click on it, choose axes, and then set the kind of axes you want. Um, normal axes, those would be the kind that we were used to drawing. So there's our, there's our normal axes there. Yeah, that's kind of handy. Um, you can also, from the get-go, specify that that plot should have those axes. So if we do axes equal normal, that will, when we plot it, automatically put those axes on our graph. Okay. So if, if one variable is a function of the others, then, then plot 3D can be a much more efficient and prettier way to get a graph. You just get a better graph that way. All right. Here's another example. We've got, we've got a cone. So um, we have z squared equals x squared plus y squared. So I know that's a cone because basically if you fix z, then, then you have a circle with radius z, right? So the bigger z is, the bigger the circles are, and so we're going we're gonna to see a cone. Now one way to do that is to use implicit, since that's an, an implicit equation, right? So is just to use implicit plot 3D, and then you give the equation. z squared equals x squared plus y squared, x squared plus y squared, and then I have to give ranges on all three variables. So uh, if we want to see this cone for a ways, maybe uh, just we could just do from 1 to 1. Uh, y equals negative 1 to 1, and z equals um, negative 1 to 1 would do it for this graph. So there's our, there's our cone. It, it comes up. You notice that it doesn't quite look like a cone. It's not really complete in this case. And the problem is that Maple was kind of running around here looking for points, and it just happened to miss that one perfect point. If it had happened to guess zero zero, then it would have probably zero zero zero. Then it would have probably filled it in, but it didn't. So our cone looks a little bit incomplete. This is kind of one of the shortcomings of implicit plot 3D. What we could try is is to try instead um, solving for z as as a function of x, if we as a function of x and y, let me just uh, to show you what I mean there. Um, if z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, then z is either plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. Right? If you use the plus, you get the upper half of the cone. If you use z equals minus the square root of x squared plus y squared, then you're going to get the lower part of the cone. So we could use that then. We would have z as a function of x and y, so we could use plot 3D instead of um, having it do implicit plots. So um, let's just try the upper half of the cone, see how that does. x squared plus y squared, um, x equal negative 1 to 1, y equal negative 1 to 1. Since z is a function of x and y, you only have to specify uh, ranges on x and y in this case. We needed ranges on all three if it was implicit plot because it needed to know where to look for possible solutions. Here it's just going to pick values of x and y in that range, plug them in and get a value out. So we should get a smoother graph when we look at that. Oh yeah, we get a much nicer looking much nicer looking cone in that case. Now what we need to do is to also draw also do the lower half. So I'm going to highlight this and then I'm going to choose copy and um, to get another line in here, if you hit enter, it will evaluate. But if you hold down the shift key and hit enter, then it will just insert another line into, into what you're doing. So I'm going to plot also negative square root. Now, if I were to run these now, it would do two separate plots, one plot of the upper part and one part of the lower plot. What I want to do is to put two plots together. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to name my first plot P1, just P for plot. The name, I could also name it Bill. So I'm going to name my first plot Bill and my second plot Ed. Okay, so the colon equals then assigns the name Bill to this particular plot and assigns the name Ed to this other plot. We've got those two plots now. Uh, when you do that, the plot is actually just a bunch of points, and so you would see all the points that it intends to plot unless you suppress the output. So I'm going to end all those with colons. And then I'm going to hit Shift Enter to make another line and then display those two plots together. So I'm going to display Bill and Ed together. I'll use a semicolon there because I definitely want to see the results. I have to spell display correctly though. Okay, so when I run this, when I hit enter, it's going to figure out this plot that's the upper part of the cone. 
that's Bill, and it's going to figure out the plot that's the lower part of the cone, that's Ed, and it's not going to show any of that until I say display Bill and Ed, and then it's going to show me the two plots together. So, hmm. so we've got Bill and Ed together. Hey, that's a nice view of the cone. Now, you can see because my, my range in X and Y, let me put some axes on here, um, I think I can feed the, the command axes equal normal into the display command. Yeah, so it puts the, puts the axes on for us there. We're used to kind of thinking about the cone as, since it does have circular cross sections, it might be nice to try to get it so that it looks circular. You can see the reason that it's making it, making these squares is because I gave it sort of a square range in X and Y. But I could just give it a range if X goes from, just sort of restrict it to a circle. If X goes from negative 1 to 1, then the Y values are actually, if we wanted to make them circular, the, the, equa the circle of radius 1 would be X squared plus Y squared equals 1, or that would be Y equals plus or minus the square root, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus X squared. So I could use these as the bounds minus square root of 1 minus x squared and plus square root of 1 minus x squared as my bounds in these plots. I'm going to do that for both the upper cone and the lower cone here. I'm just changing the bounds on on y to be uh, sort of to sort of fit those circular bounds. Now I'm going to see a cone with uh, with nice circles there. It's, it's a little bit better. Let's let me see those see those values. Um, when you look at this plot, it's it's possible to to right click on a plot and change the style, so that instead of uh, maybe seeing this this uh, this style, I could change it say to contour, and that just shows me all the points that are at the same level. Of course, if I look down on it, it's, it makes a contour map of the cone. That's kind of cool. Um, you could change the style to to have the coloring but not the not the grid lines on it that's kind of interesting too as well so you might play around with those you can also just pass a style command um, to one 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 plot or to uh, to the display like if I if I say style equal patch no grid that was one of the possible styles on this one then when I plot it it used the default style for the bottom one because I didn't specify a particular style for the bottom one, but it used um, it was having trouble recalculating here, but it used the the, the default style for the bottom one because I didn't say anything about how to plot the bottom one. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting. You see, you can see that there's there can be advantages to solving for one variable as a function of the others when you're going to plot a graph. You can get a much finer result than the simple implicit plot graph that we got. That was pretty messy looking. Okay, much better when we could use plot3D and combine two plots to do it.